So yeah, thank you all for bearing out with us like throughout the day. Uh, if you listen to the previous talk about the WooCommerce, about the speed optimization, this is the logical step, and this is going to be an amazing talk about the SEO. Iselin, I'm going to tr try pronouncing your uh, Müllerhauser, Margo, yeah, yeah, middle name Margo. Uh, so yeah, take it away, Iselin. It's all you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I know that you might be tired. It's been a long day, but exceptional day. The organization team here always does like a great job. So today we're talking about SEO. Um, I am a SEO specialist and I'm based in Lausanne, so I speak French most of the time for my clients and with my clients. I've been working in-house in an agency and four years ago I started my own consulting agency. So I'm working for myself today. Uh, you might know me from one of the podcasts I host. Also, I'm the co-founder of SEO Nerd Switzerland. So you're very welcome to join us. To We have our next in-person event in Bern in May. So really, if you're around, just come. It's going to be great. Two talks. And like while I am a consultant, and I own my agency, most of the time I don't work on my own. So I work with other people. They can be either internal, like part of the client's team, or they can be um, other consultants. Most of the time, SEO will work with someone who's in charge of the development, so someone from a tech team and someone from a content team. So I'm like in a, the link in the middle. Um, I'm very shy, so I'm doing my best. If you come to talk to me later, I might look uncomfortable. That's because I am. <laughs> but I'm very friendly, so if you have a question, just uh, I'll be at the meal later, you know, the after thing. Um, so, yeah, just come to me. And also, with my... In the project, I'm really well known for being the one who is very precise. So I'm like very rigorous, you know? So I know I'm always well planned. Um, and my favorite part about SEO is analyzing data. So I like Google Sheets, I like tracking data, I like understanding what's going on and prioritizing. I am not a tech SEO, right? This is what collaboration looks like. So my job is basically to analyze data, a situation, and provide recommendation on what are the threats to be fixed for crawling and indexing, and what are the content opportunities for the content team to develop. So I suppose you are in the dev team sort of type, right? <laughs> Excellent. So today I'm here, although I'm shy, because I think it's really important to understand what other specialists do to be able to collaborate well. In the SEO community, there are lots of lots of talks about, oh, how to collaborate with dev is just such a nightmare. So maybe you have this kind of conversation sometimes, oh, how to collaborate with SEO, they're such nightmares. So my idea of Efficient collaboration is really like when everyone understands a bit how the other experts approach the project. This is why at the end of this talk, I'm going to show you my deliverable. So you understand what it is you will have to work with. So here's what you learn. This is as much as I would have liked to do. This is not a training, so I've added a little star. So I'm not going to train you on how to implement things. I'm going just to make you aware of what are the things you have to think about when you are dealing with the clients who's asking you uh, for an SEO approach or when you're dealing with um, an SEO specialist. So this is really just about making you aware of the things and then you can follow up, of course, with trainings just like the one we had um, in the other room with Ramkus, right, about the speed. And we'll touch about two very important topics in the SEO communities, which are migrations. We always talk about migrations and the specific challenge of what is a B2B e-commerce. So there are some things that always, um, some type of challenges that always come back, whatever the project. 
I hope you will understand how to add SEO in your process and how to work with the deliverable. And um, of course, I, I hope you will be aware of the factors, despite the robots and the text, and, and the tech that also play a role in the, the SEO success of a project. So that's a lot of things. But I also really love a good story, and since I know this is the one before last talk, um, my talk is like a story. So basically, it's the best kind of story because it's a use case, yeah. <laughs> so it's actually a true story of a project that happened last end of last year and gonna still happening now. So on each project I am hired like I have a mission in an initial situation and my mission is always similar. So I'm here to get that traffic. People hire me because they want traffic on their website. So but that can mean different type of things for the client. The client can be a company who is selling something but the client can also be a project or an association, and in the end, this traffic must result in an action. This action can vary between filling in a contact form for lead generation like websites, it can be buying a product, a WooCommerce website, it can be being a new member of an association, a donation, or all of this thing. Keep in mind that a client is not satisfied purely with traffic. That's the difficult thing, is that they think they want traffic, but they want actually the results that's supposed to come with traffic. And if at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, I'm so happy. We have so many impressions on that word. If nothing happened on the website, like they are not going to care about this increase in impressions in the search, in the SERP, in the another one of these words, search engine results page. There we go. <laughs> but while, while each project has sort of the similar mission for me, like each situation is unique. So as a SEO, I need to evaluate, there's a big job of evaluating the situation and what I can play with when I arrive on the project. So, Let's, let's deep dive in the situation. I'm talking about a B2B project. So this is a company that's working with other company. This company is um, active in three different type of industries because it has been expanding. So it's like lightning, um, and lightning especially for all of this little thing for exits and stuff and the sounds, you know, when there is a fire. Obviously, this is an industry that is regulated, so you can't do whatever you want to do. There are lots of norms and formations that they have to do. The company is based in Romandy. It's working well for them in Romandy. And of course, that's why they have a little bit of money to invest in the website. They're like, oh, we want to expand now. So basically, they say, I want new market share. So now I'm doing well in French. I want to do as well in Swiss German. And let's see what, what, how can this work out. So basically, this is why that's what triggered they need for this new website. Also, they are telling me we are building a group. So remember, they have three domain of activity. That means they have three names, three brand names. They want to be known as a group. So they have, they're going for fourth brand name. This is important for SEO, right? And they also say, we want an e-commerce. But you have an e-commerce. Oh no, you have two different e-commerce on two different domains, and they all built differently. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> so for the clients, it seems pretty straightforward. But let's just discuss a little bit what's actually, what, what is actually the client saying without having the awareness to say it with the words. So what he's saying is, I have four domains. I want now one domain. I have two WooCommerce built differently. I want one e-commerce. But I want all of these products on that e-commerce. 
on that domain. And I'm like, oh, -ho, okay. <laughs> but the pun is starting, right? They're also saying something without saying it. They're saying, oh, we are rebranding. Remember, we want to be known as a group. But it means that the words people use to search and find them change. So they want rebranding. And they also want new products because they have this third field of activity. You know, there, there was one domain without a WooCommerce website because it's the last field of activity that hasn't won yet. So they want new products. They want new content. So I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> okay. So, but in my head, really, what I see is just an alarm because um, for us SEO and who, that's why we, where we enter the fun part, um, it means migration. Migration. <laughs> and so, if you if you're on Twitter or if you've been to SEO conferences, you must know that migrations. We talk about this all the time. It's just such a big topic. And so in the SEO head, a migration is basically any type of change that happens on the website. So this is very large. But anytime you add a layer of change, it adds a layer of complexity. So let's see what are these changes. So different types of migrations different types of flags, which means different types of risks. I'm hired to keep the traffic, so that's why I call that risk, right? But it's also opportunities when it's done right. So I'm not saying you should not do it. I'm saying you should think about it. <laughs> and let your client know also that there will be a part of a job that is mitigating the risks. Also, this is good for expectation management, you know? So they know they have a good idea with lots of opportunities, but they also know in advance, make it written if you like in an email or something, like you know it's going to make some risk, you know, just in case um, something happens. So you can change domain. This is a migration for me as an SEO. For whatever reason it is that you're changing, adding a language, changing folders, whatever. This is migration. You can merge domain. So this is people, like lots of clients like this because it's expensive to have three websites. It's less expensive to have one website, of course, because you cut some costs. And also, you can hopefully merge the traffic and the vi visibility. So this is one type of migration. You can do a platform migration. So this is also something in the SEO head that is a risky type of migration. New design, new brand image, new content, or oh, beware, a new content architecture starts playing with URL, moving pages around. This is migrations. So we are in, in this field, migration, where uh, that's your keywords to look for articles, basically, and tips and stuff. Um, also, new structure, if you're changing HTTP from HTTPS, but that's the kind of easy one. If this is all there is, it's fine. But most of the time, it's a combination. Like, why do one thing at a time when you can do multiple things at a time, right? <laughs> most of the clients are like, oh, we're changing. And also, I like this leap of faith. It's like, yeah, of course. I mean, go for it, but let's just think about... So this is, very generally speaking, the higher key of the complexity. So while changing from HTTP to HTTPS and keeping the structure and the technical level, this is going to be easy in terms of redirect, right? You will nearly not have to write them and like map the redirect by hand. You can automati uh, automatize, you know, like, well, you can do it fast, basically. But each time you add a layer of change, you add a layer of complexity in terms of the work there is to be done, and you add a layer of risk, basically. And risk of what? Risk of losing the traffic. Risk of 
confusing the robots. Because this is one thing robots hate. They hate confusion. And they also hate when they go to an address, they used to know, oh, there was an awesome content at this URL. This is where I want to go. Oh, it's changed. Maybe it's changed, it's still the same address, but it's completely changed. Not only just the content, but also technically, new platform. Or worst, oh, the address, it's gone, it's somewhere else. <laughs> so you redirect them somewhere else, and they have to crawl everything. They have to get to understand what is on your website again, and is it relevant? Are you an expert, as you were before, or is it just like, not as good as before. So basically, this is why it's risk, confusions, and possible mistakes also. So, okay, so I've already recapped why it's risky for robots. So it's risky for robots because they know what, they like to know what they get into, because they want to offer good content to users who are doing a search because they want users to keep searching. That's how they make money, right? Oh. Right. <laughs> so change to the website means you have to go through the, pro the, the, the robots have to go to, through the fact of crawling, maybe rendering, and indexing again. And you have multiple opportunities to make it go wrong for one reason or another. So really, just it's, it's good for clients to know that if they have an idea to, they especially like to move content around for some reason, I don't know. Like if you move this page in this menu to somewhere else, it has an impact, something as simple as that. So it just, you know, no, now you know how to make your point. So the more, ri the more changes, the more risk, of course, but also the more opportunities. So one of my job is to understand the level of opportunities for each project. So the risks, it's not only me saying it's risky. So Gary is member of the search relation team at Google, so it's basically Google's spokesperson for the SEO community. He's someone you can tag him, ask questions. There's also John Muller and Martin Split. Lizzie Sassman doesn't answer as much. She's more on the content side. But um, someone to follow, right? <laughs> so search engine may go nuts. That's a fact. And it also means that when, even if you do everything right by the book, there is like a moment after you put you after you do your relaunch, where search engine, like, you might see some lows, you might see some stuff during a couple of days, a couple of weeks, hopefully not. Um, but you might see some fluctuation, okay? It's not going to go like this. It might go a bit like this, and then up, okay? So that's perfectly normal, but hopefully you have to track that it's not a plunge, because, you know, we don't want to plunge, obviously. So there are other factors that play a role in the success of, of a project in terms of SEO. There is the objective and the expected results. Of course, the competition. Basically, a website is never all green flags, perfectly constructed. And that's not what we aim at, because it's too expensive, it doesn't make sense. A website is always a little bit messy, but hopefully a little bit less messy than the competition. So that's the idea. If your competition is really good, it's like in any race, any sports, right? If the first is really good, you have to train a lot to beat him. So that's the idea. Other thing, of course, is the tech that you're using, like, and how you know how to use this tech. So the, the level of knowledge of the people in the team, for me, make a real big difference. If it's someone who's like Remkus, just so perfect at performance and speed, it's going to be easier, easy to, to say the things I want him to do, and he's going to find solution. But if it's, if it's someone who is sort of more of on the beginner side, on the tech, it's going to be more complicated because I'm going to say the, some words, 
and use some vocabulary, and it's going to be new for that person. And this is basically what's happened in that project, is that the team was kind of beginner. So for me, it means that I have to offer recommendations that are on the easy side of complexity. So if something is not needed, better just not to use it, right? If something is not solving a, a solution, like lots of people love hreflang tag for the language, but if your website has two languages and the robots understood it has two languages, don't bother with this. Like, it's just a visible flag, you don't really need it. So that's for you to see a bit like, I have to expect the people on the tech team also to do a little bit of training. I can offer explanation, articles, but there is a step we have to do to meet in the middle for the project to be successful. And of course, the budget and resources. This is a very important thing because the client is asking a development team, a content team to work on the project for like several hundred products plus me. So that's an extra expense. So he wants to be seen on these words, but does he, ha does he have the budget to actually write the content? You know, and some, sometimes clients, they have very high expectations, but they just don't have the budget that go together. I mean, at some points, you have an e-commerce website, so you have to at least write a custom title on each page. If you have 400 products, it means that someone has, you have, you need this, you need a minimum, like the minimum, content to survive, right? So sometimes it's really about telling the client, all right, so you have to take it easy there and maybe start with a okay enough version with less content to go first and refine later. So that's an option. And of course here, the branding and the marketing strategy is very important. The client wants to change its name but if the client keeps the same kind of internal documentation and sends all of the letters to the clients with the old names, there is no way the clients are going to recognize that company for its new name and search for the new name. So if you, okay, you redirect the website with the name that is performing well, but still, like the home page, you don't have a home page with the name that was, the brand name that was performing well, so it's risky, right? So it has to go together. It really has to go together. So now, opportunities. On that website, I was really happy because there is really untapped potential. The website is indexed for a series of words. I can see that in the search console. I have the data of how many impression they have on this word on, on the words. I can see in Google Analytics that yes, it makes sense that they want to work on organic traffic because it is the biggest source of traffic. But what I also see is that, is, is that if I take this list of words the website is indexed for in href, which is one of the tools I use, and I extract the search volume, I can see there is a huge difference between the impression we actually get and the possible impression we have, because the search volume is actually much higher, which means that we don't get impressions as much as we could. So basically, this is potential, right? And also, what was a little bit scary on that website when I arrived is that there were no index tag on all the product page, which means that the business was indexed for business-relevant words like éclairage de sécurité, but it was not indexed for the name of this green thing, exit contro controller, <laughs> right? Um, which means that this is a huge potential. I mean, like, none of the products were indexed. Like, someone, if you don't know how to use a no-index tag, don't use it. <laughs> like, don't use it. But also, this is gold for me, right? Because I'm like, ooh -hoo. <laughs> interesting. So, yeah, product pages. And also, there was a multiplication of irrelevant URL. How do I know that? 
So this is what what I call an irrelevant URL looks like. In an e-commerce website, you know you have the category pages, hopefully with pretty URL, and you have the filters because the filters makes it easy for the users to actually find what they want. On that specific website, you have one product, but with different types of voltage, for instance, because it's electricity. So that made lots of URL. This URL belong to the current websites, but also to the older version of the sites, like, I don't know, really. So there are like too many of this URL. I can see that because when I go in, in the search console, like, I know how many pages I have with actual contents because I have crawled the website with Creaming Frog. So I know how many pages there are with content, right? And when I go to the performance reports, I see that they are much, much more URL indexed compared to actual URL where I have content on the website, which means that the content is diluted, like robots don't know where the content is. Like, it's, it's the same, basically, it's you know, all over the place. So this is a good in sign for me that, uh -huh. <laughs> and now we get to the second cool part of the talk, is it, it's an indication for me that there was no indexation strategy, because there is a huge other topic we always discuss with e-commerce websites, the risk of this multiplication of URL. Maybe you've heard about crawl budget, diluted, like um, duplicate content and all of this thing. But th this is one of the reasons why this happens. It's called faceted navigation. So in the SEO world where we, when we look for information about this opportunity, but also threats of e-commerce websites, we look for the word faceted navigation. Yeah. So, faceted navigation is great because you can provide exactly what the user is looking for. So, it's better to have a new URL with parameters indexed if there is a high search volume than no URL at all. So, this is good, this is an opportunity, but it's also a threat because if all of these URL do, do not match an actual search intent, it's just diluting your website in lots, lots of URL. So that's why it's a threat and it's an opportunity. So parameters are tricky because they cause issues such as duplicate content, lots of URL, same content or nearly same content, thin, low quality pages, you get tagged for that. Um, Google notices, eh, it's not good, like what happens. Diluted link equity, this is when you have um, external links that show to your website, but you have multiplication of URLs, so it just doesn't work as well. And also the wasted crawl budget. So the wasted crawl budget for B2B website, it was not as important, but if you work in a B2C with lots more products, that can be an issue. You don't want Google to stop crawling your websites at some points because it's too big. <gasps> Oh, because it's too slow. <laughs> that can happen too. All right. So there's a whole lot of issues that, that arise with um, e-commerce websites. No. Okay. Let's go back to the topic. So we were saying <laughs> this is a B2B. There are a high number of bad URL, so which means low contents, and we have lots of opportunities for new keywords. Excellent. Good, good. Good thing, the competition is not better. <laughs> so this is a quick thing I really like to do. So, Mokley, okay, keywords. So that's a list of keywords I've scraped and I've taken from my client, the competition. Monthly search volume, MSV, keyword difficulty. This is extracted from href. It's telling me how hard it's gonna to be to rank and how much opportunities do we have. Impression actuelle, click. This is extracted from the search console, from my client's website. I'm trying to see like, if I have a 20 monthly search volume for onduleur, am I actually indexed for that word? No, NA, it means that my formula VLOOKUP did not find something. So we are not indexed for that keyword, but we have like 20 
opportunity of 20 people reaching our website, basically. Good thing is, so conversion is empty because this client is not tracking conversion, so we have no idea if it's actually really making money because we don't track the clicks, you know, checkout thing. And competition one, two, three, um, this is also from href. It's like excellent to spy others. <laughs> and so you can export the data of the keywords the other companies are indexed for. And you can also say how much traffic they get out of each keyword. This data is less accurate than the data you can get through the Google Search Console. But of course, I don't have access to the Search Console of the competition. So I do with what I have. So the good thing is, I can do better, <laughs> I can do so much better, I can beat them. I can do also this research for French and for German, because this is one thing to do it in French, but it's another thing to do it in German, because we go for the German market. But that's good, potential, woohoo, which means that I can actually promise something to the client. So, my plan, I have a big plan, so it's not big enough here to have all of it. But basically, I want to clean up the mess. I want to all of this bad URL to go away. I want to clean this up. I want clean structure. I want to beat the competition. So I want to say to my clients after six months, oh, we have 10% more keywords that compared to this competitor. Of course, I want to drive traffic, That's, and I want to keep the good thing, because there are a couple of good things on that website. And I need to make sure that we transfer this to the next website. So, my plan is to focus on a small number of URL with very good content. So, I want to create strong product page, and I want to create strong category pages, which means creating content also. Service pages, we have some of them, so we need to transfer what's existing. Basically, these are the home page of the other domain we are migrating on the number one domain. So I need to select the technical requirements to make something that is actually realistic to make for the team, and that's going to do what I'm aiming for. So really, it's about cleaning up the mess. My offer looks like this. I have things for the what I call SEO optimization for the new website. I, have, I provide support for the migration. I provide recommendations to track the performance and track the KPI to say, oh, we did a good job, we did a bad job, it's bringing money, it's not. I need also time to collaborate with the technical team. Now, this is the very difficult part to actually give a number on, because like how it's difficult for me to know how long I'm going to spend talking with the dev team, because I need to know how much they actually know already about e-commerce and how aware they are about what I'm going to say. Same with the content team. The less they know, the more I have to train them. And of course, the follow-up after six months, you know, just checking whatever happened, happened <laughs> as intended. So in the SEO optimization, there are lots of tasks. Keyword research, French and German, the content architecture, the wireframes for selection of pages, again, because the writing team is not able to provide, create the wireframes based on my keyword recommendation, and they are not able to understand the search intent, so I have to do this job for them. And I do also provide a product pages optimization. So they are like the evergreen pages and the project WooCommerce pages. URL mapping with keywords and writing. Basic tech SEO requirements, some of them I add. I have a big list and I choose what makes sense, what doesn't for each client. And of course, an indexation strategy, especially commerce, so we don't end up with lots and lots of URL. Now. My promise is really to support the team to create that website that will bring the traffic. And when I do a contract, I really need, like, when I sign a contract, I need to make sure that I can honor my guarantees. Basically, I'm responsible for delivering that thing. <laughs> and in that specific project, I'm not a WooCommerce SEO specialist. So I introduce Kera to the team who works like she is an SEO WooCommerce specialist. Basically, her job is when I say, I want to do this that way, Kara is telling me, oh, yeah, with WooCommerce, that's going to be easy 
you can do this. Or she's going to tell me, ooh, no, with WooCommerce, this is complicated. Let's find another way. And I expect the development team to talk with her as well. It's true that in this situation, the client might not pay for that time. So if I think I need someone to help me, I consider it's my responsibility to make sure I deliver something that is proper. And I also expect that it's the responsibility of the tech team to make sure they can find the solution to what I'm recommending, right? So this is serious. This is like the contract stuff, you know? So let's dig into the deliverable. <laughs> so this is a keyword search. Keyword search is a very simple document. It's a Google Sheet. You have basically one column for the keywords, you have one column for, for the monthly search volume, and one column for the keyword difficulty. You do this in French, you do this in German. Is it the same? Is it different? S very often, Swiss German don't really search like we do. Or, I don't know, other way around. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's really good to do both and make sure they reconcile, you know. Um, to find those keywords, I talk with my clients. I listen how they speak about their job and the words they use. I scrap stuff from the competition. If the competition is doing that, maybe I should do it too. So I scrap lots of things. There is no wrong into copying someone who is doing well. It's called inspiration, right? Then I do uh, competition and search intent analysis. So basically, once I have chosen my keywords, I have to make sure that the website of my client is going to answer better the search intent than the competition. So on a selection of keywords, I do with href and then with a manual search, I look at what is on the page that is ranking well. Like, content-wise and also technical-wise, like, why is it ranking well? There is something Google likes about that page. What is it? So there is really this sort of digging and discovery to understand the search intent. Because I want to beat them, so I need to do at least as well, or hopefully better, right? Then I do content architecture. So it looks like this. Again, it's a very simple document. It just colors. I'm trying to think that the best performing keywords should be high up in the hierarchy. Or if something is really at the bottom in the hierarchy, I need to have a clever way of linking that, because otherwise it's just a lost page that is not going to help. So my plan is really to organize something that that shows Google that we answer the semantic fields of this expertise. We answer the semantic fields like of these products. So it has to be structured. And I also identify what is a traffic page and what is a conversion, conversion pages. So there are some pages they are not going to bring traffic ever. It's not their point. It, they are meant to like make the client feel secure, you know. So you need to have those as well somewhere and link them to make them accessible. I do wireframe for selection of pages. So this is like, again, it's not design, because as SEO, I, I couldn't care less about design. Honestly, I just don't want some wiggly stuff, complicated fonts, and I want easy. And so what I plan is the content architecture. What's interesting here is I want to make clear both to the writing team and to the development team where are the important stuff on the page, which are, for example, the internal linking, the title, and this kind of stuff. I also advise how to track the KPI. So the idea, again, it's like I in the Search Console, in analytics, we have KPIs, but you need to understand how you're going to say, oh, this actually made money, so they clicked on that button. Because I want to make sure that the, the traffic I'm bringing is, is bringing something to the clients, and I want to make sure that if it's not bringing something to the clients, it's nothing to do with the page. Maybe it's the checkout process, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that's another question. And checkout process is really not, this is typically a conversion pages, not bringing traffic, not really my thing. 
And of course, I provide recommendation like how should look like a product page. So this is like a page type. And for that particular client, like for lots of B2Bs, if you have just a custom title and three lines of what is it, it just goes such a long way. And also be very careful about PDFs. Like if you have lots of PDFs, just you know, add the technicalities on the page. Don't leave them in, the, in a PDF, especially because you don't want to have your PDF indexed instead of your product pages, like what happened on, with my clients. So, <laughs> so that's the kind of recommendation I provide for the product pages. Bunch of basic tech SEO here. Um, it's really a selection, and I tried to have basically as few recommendations as possible for the dev team. So, okay, okay. You can hear that? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Um, and then this is what the URL mapping looks like. Um, so basically, I have to make sure that each page, each keyword that is interesting and relevant has a page, has a page, and I need to think if I can use the navigation. And I do this also for the parts with the WooCommerce. So it's the same. We have to discuss. There's a category. There's a subcategory. B2B clients want to go granular. They have categories for one product that does not work well. <laughs> have at least four to six products in each category. Otherwise, you are again to this thing of yeah. <laughs> um, otherwise, you, if you have too many uh, categories and subcategories with too few products, you have the same issues than with your URL with the parameters, basically. You have URL with nothing on your page, so low content, blah, blah, etc. And also, I write the URL, so I decide how they're going to look like once they are pretty. You need to do this job in both French and German, by the way. So I do that for the evergreen pages and for the, the, the catalog, the e-commerce part. So again, it has to do, you have, if you have a bilingual website, you have to do both. You, can just, you cannot just say, oh, I'll do the French and let's see what happens with the German. Mostly the German is going to be a nightmare if you don't look at the URL because of the special characters. So you have to think about this. Also, B2B clients also sometimes have numbers in, and signs in the name of the product, which you might not want in the URL. So really, you need to check it out. And the indexation strategy, um, that's one before last deliverable, deliverable, I made it really simple. So basically, I advise something that is not by the book. You have lots of ways to tell to a robot what you should index and what you should not. Since it was such a mess, and I did not want to go into too much complexity, my indexation strategy for the beginning was with robot TXT. I was like, okay, we are just going to disallow everything that's a parameter, because we just want to clean it up. And also, we don't have all of the products at the beginning. So we already know there are too many categories, so we don't want to add too much. So this is not by the book, but this is perfect for that client. So again, it depends on... Also, it was perfect for what the technical team could do, because I just provide the robot TXT and say, oh, this is what you should... Please, use that, <laughs> okay? But again, you should change that. If you go easy at the beginning, perfectly fine, but refine after a while. Again, the plan is to go easy, but strong. Few page, but really good pages. And the last deliverable I'm going to discuss here, it's um, I, do, I always take 12 months of pages that have sense for SEO, which are traffic pages, impression pages, and linked use pages. So I get that from Google Analytics, the Search Console, and href. And then I merge that, I clean it up, I don't want, we don't need double, obviously. Um, and then I send that to the client and I say, all right, now you have started writing, we have the URL, you can map them, because when you have such thing as three domains going into one, 
you have to do lots of URL mapping for the redirect manually, and there's no way out of that, unfortunately. <laughs> so yeah, that was the last, and really go for 12 months. Some people go for three, but this is not enough because there are business variation throughout the year. So if you do your migration in September and you have the three months of summer, you are not catching what's important. Really not, and then it gets scary, you know, with the dip. So go for 12 months. All right, just in time, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Iselin. Thank you so much. So, yeah, as a work camp, and uh, our community is highly opinionated, and every talk about the SEO starts like, do you have like the favorite SEO plugin that you're <laughs> using? No, I don't have favorite SEO plugin because it really depends on the clients, B2B, B2C, lead generation, WooCommerce, like, it really depends. What I have favorite things, I have like favorite basic tech SEO implementation. Be relevant between your robot.txt, your sitemaps, your you know index, for instance. Like, be coherent. It has to say the same things to the robots. Not one thing here, one thing there. You know. You have questions from the audience. We have like limited. We, uh, yeah, Matt. There is. Yeah, let's wait for the. You, you said you have to. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> you said you have to deliver on every promise, um, which is wonderful. Um, has there been a situation or circumstance in which you felt, no, I can't deliver, and you have to tell the client no? Yes, with this project. At some points, I advised on the categories and subcategories, for instance, what would work well, and the clients wanted to go granular and have close to nothing in these categories and, and not use the keywords. And I told the client, if you go this way, I'm not, this is not my responsibility. If you do changes to my Google Sheets with the URL and the categories, this is your responsibility. Nice. Yeah, we have time for one more question, so please use it wisely. <laughs> okay, I'll use it. <laughs> I'm kidding. kidding. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs>